In this video, I'm going to be talking about the route, kit and tips for cycling the NC500. I cycled the NC500 last August and it was absolutely incredible and a route I think needs to get done by bike. So I hope this video helps you and you go out and have an awesome adventure. Starting in Inverness, the NC500 is a coastal loop around northern Scotland. Due to the prevailing winds, most cyclists tend to do the loop clockwise. Whilst there are many variations, there are two primary route options. The first, longer route, hugs the coast to John O'Groats, whilst the second cuts through towards Helmsdale before going inland and around the Black Islands. We chose the second option as we're planning to do Le Jog later this year. The best thing was the scenery towards Helmsdale. It was one of my favourite parts of the entire route and completely different to the previous couple of days. Mentally, the toughest part was on the last day. We saw a sign saying 11 miles to Inverness, but the route we were following adds an extra 40 miles around the Black Islands. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't very inspiring either. We decided to camp partially through choice and partially through lack of organisation because cheap accommodation is quite limited. So tip one, if you don't want to camp, book ahead. We plan to do the route in six days, which meant averaging about 135 kilometres. To give you a comparison to calculate your daily mileage, I was cycling about three to four times a week. I comfortably cycle 100 kilometres. The longest cycle route I did before was 160 kilometres. However, things did not go exactly to plan. Storm Francis is on the way. On our third day, Storm Francis hit with 60 mile an hour winds. It got blown off the road twice, which is <laughs> just insane, into the ditch as well. So we kind of, we cycled together till about six o'clock and then we just decided to call it a day and pulled in all three of us cramped into Cass's tent. The most important piece of kit you'll need is a midge head net. The midges were awful. They were like in your nose, in your eye, down your top. At one point I was blinking and I could like see it in my, my eyelashes. The next thing you'll need is a bike. I have a lightweight road bike that I attach some frame bags onto. I changed it to cassette so it had 11.32 instead of 11.28 and it made such a difference for climbing the hills. In our bags we had our sleeping gear, a small camping stove, a change of kit and a warm jacket for the evening. The bags left little room for stockpiling food which could be challenging at times as the shops were few and far between. Today, so I had a piece of toast for breakfast, an egg sandwich, a packet of monster, three brioche, <laughs> two coffees, a can of coke, two pies, five twixes. <laughs> Temperatures can drop as low as six degrees in August, and I was much warmer sharing Cass's one man tent than my booby bag. Whatever way you choose to do it, it is a phenomenal route and you will have a fantastic time. So my last piece of advice is just get out there and do it. <laughs>